Welcome back to a new video here in Swap. In this video, we're going to make a 3D transition in Fusion. Now, we're going to basically need three different things. We're going to use stock clips in this case. This would be great if you already planned these beforehand and you maybe you filmed in a certain location and you have three different scenes of the sky and the places and you want to make a transition or you forgot to do them with your own camera when you were filming so this is a good idea maybe you can try it out and see how it fits your project it's probably for users that have already played a little bit in fusion so the first thing we're going to need is we're going to go and in, in the edit page, we're going to do something first. We're going to bring the first clip that we have in mind. We can actually just get rid of the sound part in this case. And we have this clip right here. Then we're going to bring our second clip. Get rid of the audio part again, because we don't need that. And we can position these maybe around depending on how long you wanted to make it. There'll be one second mark. That could be fine. And we're going to copy these and we're going to go and actually grab that first frame and we're going to press R and then we're going to freeze these. Then we're going to cut these and we're going to bring this like that. And then we have this clip like these. If this clip from the bottom part is not long enough to fit the whole thing, what you can do is actually just do the same thing and copy that last part and then you will just freeze the last frame. After we have these, we can actually create the fusion clip by going right click and then new fusion clip. After that, we can rename these ready tutorial. It's really up to you. And what we can do here is right click and we're going to open this in fusion. Since when we are in fusion, we're going to go and select this merchant node and we're going to create a background. We're going to press control T so that this background is actually our base. And then we're going to say erase that one here. You can actually rename these scene one or clip one, whatever you want, just to keep things organized here. What we're going to do is we're going to add an image plane here and we're going to add another one to this one and we're going to connect both of these with a the merge node. Then we're going to add a render and we're going to connect that to our merger. Now everything looks a little bit too small, but we're going to fix that in one second. We're going to select the merger and we're going to add a camera. We can press two here on the merger so we can see everything. And right now, both of the clips are overlapped. So they're going to be and right now, both of the clips are overlapping so that something weird is going to happen. And we don't want that. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the second scene in the image plane. We're going to go to transform and we're going to press one on the X value. That's going to make them be side by side. And now we can go and check our render by pressing one here or in this one. And we're not seeing anything because our camera is right on top of our clip. We're going to go to the transform in the camera and we're going to bring these back a little bit. Right until the point where it covers the whole clip. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the sky that we have in mind. For that, we're going to add here this the sky that I brought from a stock website and I try to find a sky image or video that fit similarly to both colors sky. We can rename that as you can see here in this 3D section, you'll see this guy here is a little bit too blue and then here is a little bit brighter. So we're going to animate that also in a little bit when we have the camera movement already happening and I will show you that in a little bit. OK, after that, we're going to add an image plane to our sky and we're going to connect these to their merger. Now it's going to be overlapping again, but we're going to go to the transform. And in this case, we're going to press this 0.5 for the X value. We're going to go to scale and we're going to make this bigger. You can make it three times bigger or maybe two. It really depends. If you make it two, it will fit well enough. And if you go a little bit above, then you will have a little bit of an extra margin in case there's some extra movement that you want to do. OK. Now we're going to bring these a little bit higher and we're going to add a bender. This bender, what it's going to do is we're going to bend our sky so it's a little bit curved so it's not too flat and we can move the camera around a little bit more. With the Y axis like that, we're just going to increase the amount and then we're going to go to our image plane and we can rotate these 
a little bit on the x value and then we can maybe bring this a little bit closer to our other screens right here it's really all about tweaking in this case so you have to play around with that a little bit okay now we want to go to the sky and we're going to press ctrl and spacebar and we're going to add a color corrector what we're going to do with these is we're going to try to match these with this light blue that we have here in that case if we move these a little bit closer to the light blue that affects it a little bit but i think we need to desaturate these a little bit and basically adjust a few of the values here until it gets closer to that color that we have here and it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be using the motion blur which is going to cover those details because otherwise you will be spending a ton of time trying to match these exactly how it is but if you want to spend more time then you can do that too after we have that we can see where the movement starts in the second clip so we know where we can actually start the camera to come down in it because we don't want the camera to go back to that second scene when the frame is still frozen remember we did that at the beginning of the video it starts moving already there so we're gonna start at around frame 50 and we're gonna basically the only thing that's gonna have keyframes is our camera we're gonna select our camera and we're gonna right click and we're gonna animate the translate group and also the rotation group now one thing that i like to do also is that we're gonna bring these here and we're gonna make another keyframe for this z or z value because i want these to be already sort of like zooming in into the people a little bit already so just a little bit like that and then after that we're gonna bring the first movement now before we do anything what i like to do is we're gonna go to the ending point already so depending on how many frames you want this transition to have in this case we can probably work with 36 frames and here after we're there we're gonna select the keyframes again and bring this x to one and then we can actually bring these a little bit like that to that value now you already have both ending points and in between these is where you can play around with the camera movement if we go a few frames forward let's say here we can bring the camera like that using the handles and we're going to bring these to our sky right here here we can also rotate these a little bit so that there's a little bit more movement on the camera like that and also like these and we're going to be moving and adding another keyframe right here in this case move these a little bit more so an artifact right here and that's when i mentioned that we can make these a little bit bigger so that if there's something like that we can cover it with that screen okay now that we have that it's a little bit it's a lot of like details that we have to do right so first before we actually go right into that one i want this to go a little bit closer to the sky on the first scene and i don't want this to the camera to be that uh inclined yet like that maybe bring these like that and then we'll go like that to the sky and then it will come down to that one okay we're gonna leave the, these as that for now for the basics but it's all about tweaking and you can spend a ton of time just tweaking these things right go to this spline, select all of these and then you can press f it's gonna make the movement a little bit crazier or sharper and if you like that you can leave it like that or if you want it to be a more linear you can just leave it on linear now let's activate the motion blur so we can check out how it looks go to the renderer here and settings and then add motion blur now this does take a bunch of ram and gpu probably if you're using the studio version version i'm working on the free version right here so that everybody that doesn't have the studio version can actually just try this effect too just make sure that you're working with enough ram or go to the playback and then set the resolution to have resolution so that you can actually work and the whole thing doesn't crash okay let's preview this 
it's a little bit sharp, right? And that's because this actual path is pretty sharp. We're going to fix that in one second. Now, one thing here that I noticed is this sky is not the same color. And I mentioned earlier that we're going to use the color corrector and that we were going to add a few keyframes to it. And that's when we're going to do it. So right here, before the camera starts going down, we're going to create a few keyframes here for the elements that we have adjusted. You can do it with everything if you adjust everything. We're going to go to the point where we can see the sky like that covering half the screen. And then we're going to adjust these so that they both are close and match with each other. They don't have to match perfectly, but as long as you're able to sort of like cover that sharp, that sharp edge that we have there, then that should be enough. I think that's good enough. We can actually bring these a little bit closer to the yellow side here. Maybe that can actually make it match better. That looks a little bit better, right? Yeah, I think that looks better too. Okay, we can go to the spline. These I'm gonna press F2. And then after we have that, we can check this out. Yep, I like that. As you can see here, the camera goes straight to that ending point. I wanna go a few frames forward and make this camera to, and to come down a little bit closer to the screen so that then we have sort of like a zoom out a little bit of a zoom of a movement like that since it's a little bit too fast what we can do here is go to the camera here in the spline tool and we're gonna select these points and we're gonna and then we're gonna drag these to the side a little bit so that there's a few more keyframes in between like that so there's a little bit more of like a smooth movement okay after you are happy with that basic movement, one last thing that we can do is we're going to actually select this path right here and we can select these, make sure that it's all of it. All of the points are red and yellow. We're going to right click and then where it says 3D offset path, we're going to go to smooth and then we can smooth X, Y and Z. That's going to make the whole path have a little bit more of a curved shape. And that's going to make the movement a little bit smoother in terms of that, that quick impact. There it goes. And now one thing that I just noticed that, that this original clip had a little bit of a blurry beginning. It's not something that I added. But if your clip doesn't have that, you can actually do that as a way to sort of like mask or paint a little bit over and then reveal it. That way it's going to make it uh, look a little bit smoother in case your clip is not like that for, straight from the beginning. And it sort of add a little bit of a parallax effect too right here with this camera movement. Okay, so I think that is pretty much it. I don't, I don't think that I forgot anything about these. It's really up to you and how much you want to play around with this. If you want to make this last longer, so if you want the sky to be shown a little bit more, you can go and just adjust the time that it takes for the whole camera to rotate right here. So you would just go to the spline tool and make sure this point is right here so that you know where you are and holding shift you can move this a little bit to the side so that's a little bit slower there there's a little bit more of a pause and then you can go to that second scene now another thing that i noticed that this guy is this one is a video right so if it's moving and it's too slow that to even notice you can go and add a time speed here and you can play around with the speed settings so that maybe it moves a little bit more and that the people are actually able to see that it's a real sky moving in there but yeah and if the camera is too close to the sky right here you can also play around and make these go a little bit backwards so they can see a bigger portion of the sky and then it goes back like that you can always tweak points here and if you don't like it you can go back here and just erase these keyframes and there you have that now that is it for this video. I am not sure if I can actually save this and share it with you as a project file because it sort of like really depends on the footage that you have. I might be able to and then you can just replace these actual screens with your footage. But yeah, let me know if you will be interested in me sharing these and I'll see if there's a way so that you can use these and play around with it. Because otherwise you will just have to build these from scratch. Let me just show you the whole thing in full screen. Thank <laughs> you. 
so that is pretty much how you would do these if you want to add more clips you just all it's all about just rinse and repeat that same process with more clips like you have seen in the intro of this video and this is actually cool for travel videos but you might be able to use this effect with pretty much anything else just something that has to match the style of both clips maybe a car video and then you just go from one part to another part of the car using something like this again thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video here in suave bye